Nais ko na po ang mag-aral. Pati na po ang mga classmates ko at mga teachers ko. Gustong gusto ko na po ang makapag-aral kahit may COVID-19. Hindi ko maisip kung paano magiging madali ang pagtuturo nang hindi ko nakikita ang aking mga estudyante. Pero hindi ko gugustuhin na matigil ang kanilang pag-aaral ngayong may pandemya. Maraming bago ngayon dahil sa COVID-19. Ang mga anak namin ay hindi muna papasok sa paaralan. Pero paano naman may pagpapatuloy ang kanilang edukasyon? The Philippine educational system faces today a big challenge on how to ensure that school-aged children and adult learners get the right education amidst the prevailing pandemic COVID-19. There are no existing models which can be benchmarked in crafting an accessible, relevant, and responsive education plan in times of emergency. The Department of Education is constitutionally mandated to provide accessible, quality, and relevant education to all Filipino children. Thus, despite of the prevailing health conditions in the Philippines and all over the world, education must not stop. DepEd Region 3 joins the national leadership of the Department of Education, headed by Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, in its pursuit to continue the learning of school children and adult learners. DepEd Region 3, despite of the pandemic COVID-19, pursues the delivery of an accessible, relevant, responsive, and inclusive education to all levels, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high school, and senior high school. This also includes the formal system like Alternative Learning System or ALS, and Indigenous People Education or IPED. This learning continuity plan is designed to set strategic directions to public and private schools in Central Luzon to ensure that school-aged children and adult learners acquire the most essential learning competencies or MELCs in the midst of the pandemic. To aptly respond to the growing demands for continuity of learning, DEP at Region 3 aims to ensure the readiness of the schools, determine the most appropriate teaching learning modalities to develop the most essential learning competencies among learners, provide policy guidelines to schools division offices in the implementation and monitoring of teaching learning modalities, school-based and remote learning, provide transition program for the CID and SGOD chiefs, education supervisors, public schools district supervisors, school head and teachers on the adapted teaching learning modality, ensure safe and healthy school environment, establish partnership with the stakeholders in education, and to assess the learning achievement of learners and the effectiveness of the chosen alternative delivery mode. As to assessment of school readiness, during the conduct of the remote enrollment, Mexico Elementary School administered the LESF, or the Learners' Enrollment Survey Form. By conducting this, we were able to identify the various aspects of readiness of our learners when it comes to distance learning. At the same time, we conducted various preparations for the new normal education. We also assessed our teachers' skills in conducting distance learning modalities such as modular and also TB-based learning as other supplemental mode of education. Well, the, the country's health situation has brought significant changes in the delivery of the teaching learning process wherein Educational adjustments and alignment must be integrated to ensure mastery of most essential skills among learners. Empirical data through surveys were gathered and analyzed to determine the most appropriate learning delivery modalities based on the school context and the stakeholders, especially parents and learners' preferences. Online and modular distance learning proved to be the most 
suited teaching learning modalities were in all efforts of the divisions focused on the preferred learning options like the development of contextualized self-learning modules and learning activity sheets on learning areas, the all-out reproduction of modules and numerous capacity buildings for all teachers to equip them efficiently and effectively utilizing the ODL and MDL. With regard to the different uh, learning resources, the LR of uh, the Region 3 harvested learning resources or learning materials from uh, the LR portal and DepEd Commons so that the different uh, SDOs will have a uh, source of uh, the learning uh, materials which are uh, not uh, available in uh, the materials uploaded by the central office. In addition, uh, the region also launched a sharing uh, modality wherein the different uh, divisions uploaded their uh, locally uh, developed uh, learning resources so that other divisions can uh, use these materials which are not available in their divisions. In the crafting of our BELCP, the region has uh, conducted a survey from among our 20 schools division to look into the details of this basic learning continuity plan. To realize these goals, we had pursued the following strategies. First, goal number one is to provide policy guidelines to schools division offices in the implementation and monitoring of alternative delivery modalities. Basically, our strategies for this are to develop and issue policy guidelines on safe return to school, enrollment, capacity building, teachers' training, assessments, and other things. The Human Resource Development Division, in collaboration with the National Educators United of the Philippines Region 3, is currently conducting its role as a provider of the capacity building activities for school leaders and teachers. Uh, they have conducted actually several uh, webinars to ensure that our teachers are provided appropriate and adequate uh, know-how how to deliver the learning to our learners. The first course focused on the provision of technical assistance and coaching involving our supervisors and school heads uh, to ensure that our uh, school leaders and supervisors would be able to provide the technical assistance that they need. For the Learning Delivery Modalities Course 2, this actually involved our instructional coaches composed of the school heads, the supervisors, the senior uh, teachers, and department heads. Uh, we are also training at this moment uh, more or less 83,966 teachers in the whole region. That, of course, uh, includes our public school teachers in the 20 schools divisions. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, our learning uh, will be quality that is not only focused on the preparation of the modules for our learners, but also equated by the preparation of our school heads and supervisors to provide the necessary instructional provision of technical assistance and coaching to our teachers. As a teacher, I am proud to say that I am now more equipped and confident to face my learners through the programs, trainings, and learning action cells that our division and school have provided I could say that we are now ready to welcome school year 2020-2021 with smile on our faces. To ensure healthy and safe and school environment, we have uh, the required health standard which is DO14 series of 2020, or this is entitled as Guidelines on the Required Health Standards in Basic Education in Offices and Schools. Kalagay doon are actually more on yung mga routines and protocols for health and safety. These are non-pharmaceutical interventions that are actually uh, public health strategies that we have to apply in our offices and school to at least lessen or mitigate the severity and suppress transmission of infectious diseases. To ensure safe and healthy school environment, 
Here in the Mexico Elementary School, we are strictly following health and safety protocols and guidelines set by the DOH and IATF, such as the strict wearing of PPE or personal protective equipment like face masks and face shield, observing social distancing and regular disinfection of school premises to be protected against the transmission of virus through direct contact. We also prioritize the mental health of our teaching and non-teaching personnel by attending webinars in adherence to DEPED Order Number 14, Series 2020. Partnerships and linkages with stakeholders has been a culture in all the divisions of Region 3. For it recognizes and appreciates the immeasurable contributions of our internal and external stakeholders. The current health situation has brought significant changes in the Philippine educational system, but the stakeholders' involvement and support play a vital role. More than ever, once more, local government unit, private sectors, school alumni, non-government units, parents, and others had consistently assisted public schools by purchasing of risograp printing machines, donating disinfectant, supplies, giving of a school uh, learning kit, to name a few. To strengthen partnership with stakeholders in these times of crisis, as Filipino educators, we observe what we call the Bayanihan spirit in the opening of classes. We are so thankful that the LGUs here in Mexico our local and barangay officials exerted so much effort to help in the conduct of the remote enrollment, especially in the distribution and retrieval of modules. As we adapt to new normal of education, they are indeed our partners to ensure that education continues despite COVID-19 pandemic. We will uh, be conducting a webinar in order to uh, develop uh, contextualized uh, evaluation tools in order to evaluate the achievement of our learners and the uh, assessment of uh, the achievement of the learners and the chosen uh, modality used by uh, the teachers. Education is a basic human right. It is embodied in our national and international law. That's why, despite the pandemic, we have to ensure that education will continue. That's why in Region 3, we are preparing for the eventual opening of classes on October 5, and we have to thank our dear stakeholders, our teachers, our DepEd officials, and of course, the parents and the local government officials for helping us realize these goals. Handang isip, handang bukas. The Department of Education Region 3 is more than ready to respond to the challenges of the new normal education through the implementation of the Regional Learning Continuity Plan. We hope to have provided the necessary guidance and technical assistance to the school's division offices and basic education schools, both public and private schools in the region. We commend all our teachers, school heads, non-teaching personnel, school division superintendents for taking on the challenge to adapt to the new mode of teaching and learning for the coming school year. At the same time, we also wish to extend our profound gratitude to our partners in education, like our local government officials, media partners, and other benevolent groups and individuals who tirelessly support the Department of Education. I also want to personally thank our parents and students for trusting our efforts and deciding to enroll for this school year. Education will continue despite of the pandemic as we all ensure the health and safety of our learners and personnel. Together, we will learn and we will heal as one.
Salamat po aking magulang sa paggabay sa aking pag-aaral. Salamat po aking guro sa walang sawang pagpapagod upang makarating sa amin ang mga kakailanganin sa pag-aaral. Salamat, Salamat po, DepEd, dahil may ipapapatuloy namin ang aming edukasyon kahit may COVID-19. COVID-19.